survival stars. Come, little fish, into the shady nook. No, thanks. Bugger. Uh, What's on the menu today, Timmy? Warthog pool. Yeah, get out. Get inspired by the quirks of nature. You can't help but admire my stripy attire and the pipefish. Now I'm going to rub my eyes and, hey, are you still here? Coming up, we take a closer look at one of the primary predators from South Africa's sardine run, the dolphin. Well, our crews have spent lots of time filming dolphins on their various shoots around the world, and uh, in particular we've focused on the dolphins in the sardine run off the coast of South Africa. Now, dolphins spend their entire lives as part of highly synchronized groups called pods. They're incredible creatures and live in very, very complex societies. A lot of time is invested in teaching the young. The calf here is probably about a year old and will spend at least another six months shadowing its parent. Well, as they grow and mature, they start to build a very, very complex network of relationships. Relationships which require that they learn about the social conventions and the rules of the pod. The strongest bonds tend to be formed with the individuals they grow up with. Pods are extremely dynamic and individuals come and go. Cooperation can often be seen with behaviours such as babysitting, and alliances are formed. Males will form gangs to herd females to mate with, or to patrol the outside of the pod. This level of constant interaction is probably the main reason that we see these really complex coordinated behaviours such as the herding of the bait balls that we see during the sardine run. It's well known that dolphins have this, this sixth sense which is a, a natural sort of biosonar, but they don't just use it to navigate. Sound is also a very important part of their social communication. The sophisticated use of their sonar or echolocation, to use the proper term, certainly does hint at an underlying intelligence. However, acoustic cues are not their only means of communication. Visual cues also play a very important role. And then when at close quarters, um, a whole variety of tactile cues come into play, such as nuzzling or rubbing rostrums and pectoral fins. Like most of the cetaceans and marine mammals, the skin is extremely sensitive and physical contact seems to be an enjoyable method of reinforcing these social bonds. Dolphins combine all of these methods of communication into what can be interpreted as a sophisticated language. It's essential for any highly social animal to have a means of demonstrating their intent to other members of the group. This means that threats and dominance can be demonstrated to others without necessarily escalating into aggressive behaviours such as ramming. This gives individuals time to back off before extremely violent behaviours occur. Despite this, many dolphins do bear the scars of these encounters. The general image of dolphins being these cute, gentle, intelligent animals doesn't completely match what the research tells us. Like us, they live in a very complex, uh, ordered society, where aggression also plays a very important part. We tend to think of dolphins as occupying a place alongside the most intelligent creatures, such as elephants, apes, and even us humans. Their social structure, their large brains, language, playfulness, and the frequent interaction that we see with humans all give us the impression of a curious, inventive, and therefore ultimately intelligent animal. However, intelligence other than human intelligence is incredibly hard to define. Dolphins certainly score well when we examine their brains, which are large in relation to body size. Physiologically, they have a highly convoluted neocortex, which is the part of the brain that implies higher functions such as conscious thought. 
Their brains seem to be structured to allow for self-awareness and for the processing of emotions. But is brain anatomy the ultimate proof? Or could dolphin intelligence be based on mere mimicry, simple learnt behaviours? Some research says yes. It argues that the seemingly inventive dolphins we see in captivity lack inherent cognition and are merely conditioned to respond to specific stimuli, much like Pavlov's dogs were. This is not a popular notion, of course, especially given the public's perception of dolphins as the ocean's most intelligent and friendly animals. Some people think that the level of cognition required for their acoustic system of communication alone is enough to prove intelligence. Um, not only do they have to recognise the pattern of sounds from another dolphin, but also the significance of its modulation and its timing, and the significance of its function within the pod as a whole. So where does that leave us? Perhaps all we can say is that the mysteries of dolphin intelligence are likely to puzzle researchers for many years to come. Catch next week's episode for a closer look at the other iconic species from the sardine run.